Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about value of i to the power of i. i to the power of i is complex number to the power of complex number that seems like a complex number, but it turns out to be a real value that we will have infinitely many values of it. One of them is a principal value that is around 0 0.207, so stay tuned. So like I said, i to the power of i, this is a real number, but we have infinitely many values for this. So let's talk about this. We have now e to the power of ln x. This is equal to just the x. But we have now i to the power of i. So we can talk about e to the power of now ln of i to the power of i. This is the same as e to the power of now i times ln of i. So we need to talk about this ln of the i. Log of complex number. So let me draw this complex plane. So we have the real axis and imaginary axis. And for the standard form of a complex number, z has to be now a plus bi. OK, so let's put this. And we will have now that the r, and we have a and b. For those a and b, we can represent them as the polar form. So we can say a has to be the same as r times cosine of the theta, where the theta is now this angle. And then b has to be the same as r times sine of theta. Then your z has to be the same as now then r times cosine theta plus i times r times sine of theta. And then if you factor this r out, this is the same as r now times cosine theta plus i times sine theta. Then we can use Euler's formula. That is about e to the power of i theta. This is the same as cosine of the theta plus i times sine of theta. So that is why the z, we can represent the z as now r times e to the power of i theta. Since we're talking about ln of the i, so let's talk about complex logarithm of the z. So in general, ln of now z, this is represented as ln of mod's laws of z plus i times argument of the z. Our z is in the form of a plus b i. But then again, we're looking for just the i. So in our case, your a has to be now 0, and b is equal to 1. Formulas for the modulus of the z. This has to be then square root of a squared plus b squared. Plug in those values of the a and b that says we have square root of 1. That is just equal to 1. So modulus of the z in our case has to be equal to 1. That says, going back to this complex plane, your r has to be now just equal to 1. And then that will make your angle to be pi over 2 in our case. So this data, pi over 2, has to be the argument of the i. So using this, we can represent your ln of the i as ln of modulus of the z was equal to 1, that plus i times argument of the i, that was pi over 2. So eventually, ln of the i is the same as i times pi over 2. OK, then let's go back to this e to the power of i times ln of the i. So using this, e to the power of i times ln of the i that we are looking for. This has to be the same as e to the power of i times i times pi over 2. That will become e to the power of negative pi over 2. The value of e to the power of negative pi over 2, this is round 0 0.207. And this is called the principal value of i to the power of i. But like I said, we'll have infinitely many values for this, right? So let's talk about this complex plane again. So we had the angle of the theta, right? And then if you add 2 pi to the theta, then you should end up with the same ray. If you're adding 4 pi to the theta, then you should end up with the same ray too. So, so that says if you add multiple of 2 pi to the angle theta, you should end up with the same ray. Same thing will happen if you subtract a multiple of 2 pi from the theta. So instead of just the theta, we can represent the theta as now theta plus 2 n pi, if your n is an integer. And then using this, we can rewrite these polar forms of a and b as now r times cosine of theta plus 2 n pi. And then b has to be r times sine theta plus 2 n pi. Of course, your n has to be an integer. 
So using this, the value of the z, r times e to the power of i theta, we can also rewrite this as r times e to the power of i parenthesis theta plus 2 n pi. Of course, your n has to be an integer. And if you apply natural log to both sides, then your ln of the z has to be the same as ln of the r. Okay, then that plus pulling this everything out. So I parenthesis theta plus 2 n pi. This has to be the same as ln of the r now plus distribute this i to those two terms. I theta plus 2 n pi i. Then putting everything all together, this e to the power of i times ln i. Okay, this is not just e to the power of i times i times pi over 2, but it has to be e to the power of now i times i times pi over 2. That plus this 2n pi i. Of course, your n is an integer. If you distribute this i to those two terms, then it has to be the same as e to the power of negative pi over 2, then minus 2n pi. Of course, your n has to be an integer. So we will have infinite many values for i to the power of i, as you can see. If you want to restrict to the principal value, then we can plug it in 0 to the n. Then that has to be e to the power of negative pi over 2. That is around 0 0.207. And this makes sense because complex logarithm of z is the multi-value. How exciting.